Here he is now, Alan Bean Generous. Generous. Welcoming our special guest, all the way from Singapore, Adam McDonald. I've seen that is Adam, uh, and his uh, video of the dart competition has went viral online. Uh, come, Adam, tell me how, how did it start off this dart uh, passion of yours? Ah, well, so I was just like out with my friends, and we were at a bar, and we saw this dart ball, and then we decided, why not we give it a shot, yeah? yeah? And then, so, I went for my first try, and it didn't really go that well, like, here's how it kind of looked like. due to the degree of freedom problem. The human body faces a challenging task to control all the muscles required in a specific skill. This is a problem as the body tries to figure out how to coordinate the different muscles and joints, each with their own degree of freedom to simplify the task. Beginners frequently face this problem as their brain does not know how to coordinate the muscles around the skill. However, with adequate amount of practice, the beginner will learn to isolate the necessary muscles for the scale and eventually reduce the degree of freedom problem. So how do you improve on that, man? Well, a few things. Um, firstly, there's practice variability. Practice variability is the variation of movement and context characteristics that a learner will experience when practicing a single skill. There will be increased capability to perform the practice skill and adapt to new conditions, like throwing darts from different positions and heights, which might eventually improve results in the normal test situation. And then there's also contextual interference. Contextual interference is the interference that results from performing various skills within the context of practice. Results are usually poorer during practice as the brain cannot consolidate, but better performance will result on retention and transfer. And definitely the most important thing was my four coaches, ABCD. So my coaches ABCD, they conducted these training sessions which I felt was super effective and this is how it went. Number one, the specific setup. There is a fixed distance of 1.8 meters from the corner of the wall to the bullseye of the dartboard. There is also a fixed distance of 2.4 meters from the corner of the wall to the throwing line. Number two, specific actions. For the arms. The throwing arm is locked, only allowing the elbow joint to move freely. Upon release of the dart, a flick of the wrist is done to propel the dart forward. A bonus tip, place the non-throwing arm parallel to the ground, supporting the elbow of the throwing arm. This will provide stability and also reduce the degree of freedom. For the body, the body will lean slightly forward to get a closer reach to the dart board. Be careful though not to lean forward too much as the learner may lose balance. For the feet, stand shoulder width apart and with the dominant foot parallel to the throwing line. Put more weight on the front foot and use the back foot for balance. Number 3. Setting specific timings. We have also fixed each trial at 5 throws with a 5 second interval between each throw. Number 4. Setting quantifiable targets In setting quantifiable targets, we chose to measure our progress by measuring the distance from the tip of the dart to the bull's eye. So 
Just ABCD, they taught me a few of these methods and strategies and these are the ones that I felt helped me out the most. The paper strategy is a practice variability of the dart throw because it is the same skill, just that what we have done is help the learner focus on the middle of the board. This gives the perception of a larger bull's eye to the learner. Hence, it potentially will help the learner psychologically as he has a bigger target to aim for. By applying different variations of the same skill, such as shooting from different positions, the brain has to constantly update the motor plan as he has to deal with figuring out how much force to apply and angle to throw at. This process of having to constantly recalibrate the motor plan causes the brain to be involved in many problem-solving situations, after which, the brain is able to compare and contrast the skill. By comparing and contrasting, the brain will be able to understand how much force is needed to throw the, from the original position and hence improve his or her throwing. The non-dominant hand spins the hula hoop while attempting to shoot the dart with the dominant hand. This is contextual interference because two skills are carried out concurrently. As a result, the brain cannot consolidate or update the motor plan at the moment because of the amount of interference. This causes the brain to undergo a problem-solving process which potentially leads to an improvement in the learner's dart throwing skill. Well, as Adam's coach, I must say he has made such a great improvement in just a span of 5 weeks. Just look at him. He's gone from zero to hero. Let's also check out the progress of the five friends who trained together in the past five weeks. Wow, you can see they have significantly improved with the distance of the dart from the bullseye decreasing from week 1 to week 5. Okay, so now we've come to the end of the Allen Show and we'd like to end it off with nothing better than a dance.